and you wait for the landing page. So I'm going to stay on this United States site and then all you need to do is go to solutions and in the drop down select SAP S4 HANA. You'll then come to the SAP S4 HANA landing page. So there's some notes on how to start your free trial. If you go down, you'll also see some content to tell you what S4 HANA is and also some links in case you want to see, for example, what is S4 HANA within two minutes. All we have to do is go and select start your free trial now. So this is how you start your trial. There's two ways you can start a trial. One of them is with S4 Cloud Trial, but we're going to start the SAP S4 HANA trial. This is the on-premise version and we just need to select start your journey now. Now on this page, there's a quick start guide, there's a demo guide and there's also an FAQ. So these are really, really good resources. All we have to do on this page is go back to the top and here select start your trial now. It's going to log you into the SAP Cloud Appliance Library. And as you know, the SAP Cloud Appliance Library is a portal to many of the available trial images from SAP. So this is what the Cloud Appliance Library looks like if you haven't used it. You'll know that you run it because at the top you will see cal.sap.com. So because we're starting this image, you'll have a list of terms and conditions. You'll need to accept those terms and conditions before you can continue by clicking I accept on the bottom right hand side. Now it's important to note that the image that we're instantiating is a fully activated appliance version of SAP S4 HANA. It's version 1610 and this is the version that we use in all our video series relating to S4 HANA. It's also important to note that if you start your own S4 HANA system and it's a base version and it doesn't say that it's fully activated, it may not have the features or functions that we use in our videos. Now at the top left hand side you will see account details and there's two options choose an existing account and create a new account. Now you can see for me I've already got what's called an Amazon Web Services account and it's my default account so that's why it's automatically selected that account option within the drop down. But for those without an account there's an accounts menu and once in there you can press help or a question mark icon in the top right hand side of the screen. The reason for the need of an account is that although the software from SAP is free for 30 days, the solution is hosted by Amazon Web Services. So there's still a charge from Amazon for this solution and you'll need an AWS account. To create an AWS account, all you need is a credit card and again, you just need to select that create a new account for further information. So assuming you've got an AWS account, what we'll need to do is give our S4 image a name. I'm going to call mine Bob S4 HANA trial. And then we'll need to choose a region. I'm based in New York, so I'm going to put the image as close as possible to me. And that's in the US East dash one. We'll need to assign a password that you're going to use all over the place. So obviously make sure you know what this password is and you either write it down or you make it a memorable password. And then all you need to do is click on create. It takes a few seconds to create. And then lastly, you'll be prompted with the location of where you want the private key stored. Now we're not really going to need this pen file for this video series, but you'll use this pen file if you want to for example, access your S4 HANA Linux server using SSH, whether you use terminal in Mac or whether you use a tool such as PuTTY. Again, we don't really use it, so it gives you the options to store or to download the file. It doesn't hurt to do both, but make sure that you store that file in case you want to access your system via SSH in the future. So then you'll get some information that will say it's going to take around 60 minutes for the image to be prepared. So I'll select OK and you can see that the status is that the image is preparing. Now again it's going to take around an hour. So what I'll do while it's preparing and activating, I'll just pause the recording of the video and come back in around 55 minutes. We can see here that it's activating, it's still not activated so even though you might see the status message you'll still need to hang on and again I'll just pause while it's activating and here we can see it's active 
But now that it's active, let's go and have an actual look at the image by double clicking on the image name. So firstly, you can see how I've called it Bob S4 HANA trial. It's very easy to change. All you need to do is edit. And then you've got the option to edit the header. And I can change this, for example, to SHA and click on OK. Now, additionally, you have these options for public static IP addresses and terminal protection. Now, if you're using AWS, you'll have both an internal and an external IP address. You can see here on the right hand side, anything that starts with 10 is the input terminal. And then you've got the external IP address. Now, the problem with AWS is that unless you make the public IP address static, it will change every time you shut down and restart the server. It costs slightly more, but it's always a good idea to select public static IP address here. Also, you've got this option of termination protection. Now, what it offers you is if you accidentally right click and try and terminate the image in your list of instance instances here, you won't be allowed to terminate that image unless you go back into this option and deselect termination protection here. If you've used S4 before, if I scroll down here, and I go to more, if you've used the 1511 image, you'll notice now we have an additional machine, which is an SAP Business Objects BI Platform machine. So you've got a Business Objects BI Platform stack if you chose that option during installation. You've then got one Windows box with SAP and SAP HANA clients installed, which you obviously access via RDP. You've also got one S4 NetWeaver Java application server, which also has Adobe Document Services on it, as well as SAP Cybase ASE. And lastly, you have one HANA server, which is marked here as 1610, which has SAP HANA, ABAP, Gateway, and your Fiori tools. You'll see at the top, there's other tabs. One of them, Solution Info, Virtual Machines, Schedule, and Backups. So in terms of the Solution Info, you get a summary of the solution, and there's a Getting Started Guide, which is really useful. So if you select it, it's a PDF. And within that PDF, it fully documents what's on the image. Now, if I scroll down and go to the contents, you have an introduction about the licenses. You've got how to connect to your solution, the different ways, the various pre-deployed scenarios on the image. And also, you've got lots of config information if you want to do some advanced configuration, which is, for example, accessing your HANA system from the remote desktop or from a remote machine. And you've also got a demo guide within that PDF. So it's a great way to learn how the image works. If I scroll down, you've got this section, which is virtual machines and access points. This is really useful because this shows you what ports are opened up. So you can see 228080, which if I remember is for Tomcat, for SAP Business Objects BI Platform. 6400, which of course is for the CMS. And of course, port 3389, which is for your Windows Remote Desktop. If I scroll down, you've got Schedule, where this is you can schedule the availability of your instance. So if you edit the instance and then look at the scheduling options, you can change the schedule to be scheduled to come on, for example, during work hours. Or here you can see I'm manually activating and suspending that machine. As you can imagine, you can schedule your service to come up, for example, during working hours. This will obviously benefit you in that you'll pay less charges to AWS because, of course, you're paying while the servers are on. Personally, what I do is I suspend and activate the image as I'm using it. So the costs each month are quite low. So that's it. Nothing else really to configure. You've got a question mark on the top right hand side if in case you've got any um, questions on how the image works. So the only thing left to do is to copy that external Windows IP address. I'll copy it again. I'll go out of the instance and I'll launch my Windows remote desktop on my Mac. I'll paste the IP and then I'll select connect. You'll then log in with the username administrator with the password that you created when you instantiated the image. Then you select OK. So it should log you into that remote desktop and then you'll be prompted with the welcome screen. Now it's set up with Internet Explorer, so you might have to change some of the settings. So I'm going to say do not use recommended settings and then click on OK. We're going to eventually install Chrome. So I'll just click on OK and I'll maximize this window. Now, just for now, you might need just to click 
just so you can see this welcome screen. But if you get to this step, then you'll have successfully instantiated a series of four machines for SAP S4 HANA 1610 edition. In the next video of the series, what we're going to do is look at performing some checks just to make sure each of the tools that we're going to use for this workshop are working. So let's move onwards to the next video.